Hello and welcome to this edition of Live by Design, a program where I hope you'll find content that is informative, inspiring, and insightful. I'm your host, Moadi Dibinga. I'm a life strategist and a motivational speaker. And today is Tuesday, May 7th, 2013. Today is my niece Safi's seventh birthday. So before I get down to business, I want to wish Safi a very, very happy birthday. Auntie loves you. Now... How are you doing? How's everything going? I'm filming today from D.C. It's raining outside, but it's it's all good. I'm inside, and I'm having a pretty good day so far, and I hope you are as well. Today, we're going to continue our series of discussions that we've been having, where we've been examining the meditative thoughts that appear in my CD, Center Your Mind, Center Your Life. And the thought for today is, I will live and speak my truth. Now, when I was recording the CD, that particular track had a lot resonated with a lot of people, myself included. Um, the feedback that I got from, from people that is that it was one that sort of struck a chord with them. Because what I find in my workshops, in my one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, even when I'm dealing talking with my friends and my family, this idea of speaking the truth of who we are, showing up fully on this earth and being authentically us is a scary one. It's a challenging one. Somewhere, somehow, as children, many of us, including myself, we learn how to hide who we are, or at least hide aspects of who we are, in an effort to either gain approval or to gain something from the people that we love, the people that are closest to us. I call this spiritual laryngitis. And I call it that because I believe that each one of us was sent here to this planet to uh, deliver a unique message one that only we have the capacity and the potential to deliver. But when we don't show up fully and we're not living authentically and we're not being truthful about who we are, what we like, what we don't like, etc., then that message does not come forward. Our spirit then gets stifled. And the things that we were meant to do don't get done. The people who we were meant to heal don't get healed. And the freedom and the abundance and the peace and the joy that we were meant to experience will continues to elude us. I know for myself, you know, I was raised, some of you may know that I was raised by very strict Congolese parents who loved me dearly. I, this I know for a fact, um, but who did raise me in that culture of children are to be seen and not heard. So I didn't have a lot of opportunities as a young person to sort of examine, unfold, and unpack a lot of the different emotions, thoughts, um, behaviors that I experienced. I sort of just did what I was told and um, just you know, pretty much kept it moving. Because I didn't have an opportunity to really develop that muscle and, and, and be able to speak up for yourself and to be able to really um, speak from a place of authority for yourself takes muscle. It takes practice. It takes courage. I did have opportunities to do that as a child, so I didn't develop that skill till much later in life. And there were many instances during my childhood where I, where I could point to now where I was experiencing spiritual laryngitis. One of those um, times happened when I was in middle school, getting ready to go into high school. And I don't remember the circumstances of how I got into this little predicament, um, but I somehow had convinced my parents that I had been cast in an all-city production of Oklahoma. Um, and that I had to be at rehearsals on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Cambridge Ridge and Latin High School. I gave them the date of the performance and I expected everybody to be in attendance. Now, I had never auditioned for the production. I had heard about it in school exactly how I heard about it, I don't remember, but I knew that there was a production coming. And I kind of thought that my parents would get a kick out of seeing me on stage. And when I told them that I got into this production, they were kind of happy. They were really proud of me. And I liked that feeling. I liked the feeling of having my parents' approval and telling them this story got it for me. So I went to the rehearsals. I went to all the rehearsals. I learned all the music. I learned some of the choreography. I don't know why nobody noticed this little black girl sitting in the corner that did not have you know, whose name was not on any lists um, and who didn't really look like she had a place, but nobody did. And so I kept going to the rehearsals. And the show date got closer and closer. And as the date approached, I got a little bit nervous. How was I going to tell these folks, my parents, that, oh, guess what? I wasn't really in the show. And, oh, guess what? All those rehearsals I was going to, I was there, but I wasn't really supposed to be there because I wasn't in the show. I couldn't figure out how to tell them, so I didn't. And so the show day came. My father ended up purchasing a ticket to come see me sing. 
We went to the theater. He dropped me off at the stage door entrance, went to get his seat, and proceeded to sit in the audience waiting for his child to take the stage. In the meantime, I'm backstage. Again, nobody notices the little black girl running around here that seems to be out of place. Nobody wanted to challenge me, I guess. I don't know. And the show was going. The show was going. Intermission was happening. And my stomach, and with each passing moment, I got more nervous and more because I knew that my daddy had looked through that program and didn't see his child's name. And I knew that my daddy had been watching that stage and did not see one single person that remotely looked like his child take that stage. So I knew the questions were coming, what to do, what to do, what to do. So this is what I did. It was the last song, <laughs> the last scene. And remember, I knew all the choreography and I knew all the songs. These little girls started marching past me, holding on hands, right, in a chain to make their entrance. When that last girl passed me, I grabbed her hand and I got on that stage. And when my cue came, I hit that note. O-K-L-A-H-O-M-A, -A Oklahoma. <laughs> we bowed. <laughs> and I got on stage, grabbed my things. <laughs> <laughs> went to meet my father at the stage entrance as planned, and we went home in silence. And I was waiting because I knew it was coming. I figured he, he dad, dad's gonna say something. He didn't say anything on the way home at all. Got home, didn't say anything. I don't even know if he told my mother to this day. Never mentioned it to me again. In retrospect, now that I look back, he was probably thinking this child has probably suffered enough through the embarrassment and humiliation of getting up on a stage where she had no business being. I'm going to leave her alone. <laughs> now, I usually share that story with young people when they're going through, you know, something really difficult because it usually brings a smile to their face. It sounds really crazy, but it's a true story, and it usually gets a little chuckle out of them. But I'm sharing that with you now because that's my most vivid recollection of, an, of a time when I lost my spiritual voice. I experienced spiritual laryngitis while I was singing on that stage. I call it that because I didn't have the capacity to just go to my parents and tell the truth. I'm not really in the show. I'm really, really sorry that I lied to you guys. I really just wanted you guys to be proud of me, and I thought that you would get a kick out of me being in the show, and I didn't know how to tell you guys the truth. That was my truth at the time. But because we didn't have a relationship whereby we were able to speak with one another that way, I could not share that with my parents. And instead, you know, we ended up on stage singing Oklahoma. Now, this is not to blame my parents. My parents love me, and they're old school Congolese, so they raised us with the same awareness that they were raised when they were children. What I know to be true for myself today is that I do bring this new consciousness to my parenting with my nephews and my nieces, meaning that Whereas this was not the case for me when I was a child, with this group of children, we talk to them about their feelings. We talk to them about their preferences. We give them the space to develop the habit, to develop the skill to be their own advocate and to be who they are in this world authentically without worrying about having to be somebody to please us. Now, we don't let them run buck wild in the street and they're not running around being disrespectful, but they are being encouraged to learn how do I speak my truth. I didn't have that when I was younger, and I paid the price for that as I got older. But when I did get on this path of healing, and I did discover that I do have the right to speak up for myself and show all parts of me to this world without shame, without worry, without blame. When I started to get that, I started to feel a shift in my, in my consciousness and I started to see shifts in my life. My life. And it wasn't easy. Because remember, I'm going from never talking about an emotion to you know trying to develop this new skill late at a later stage in life. And it was hard. And I felt myself being embarrassed when I was talking about being vulnerable or or being afraid or feeling you know feeling fear and fear, feeling feeling anxiety because up until that point I had seen those and I had been trained um, to, to see those emotions as being weak as being really you know sorry and so now as an adult as I'm trying to develop the habit of being honest about all of my feelings it was I had a hard way to go but now fast forward several years I'm at a place now where I can say I like this I don't like that I like you I don't like you 
from a place of confidence and peace without the vibrato and without the melodrama. I can now walk and show you who I am, express myself fully. And like I said, whether you like me or don't like me is not my spiritual business. You can either be in my presence or you can bounce. Either way, I'm good. And through this process of speaking more truthfully, being more authentic, and letting the true voice that I have be heard, I have opened the door to allow more peace in, into my life, more love into my life, more authentic, real relationships into my life, and all the fools and the knuckleheads have, have made their way out. And it's been bliss. You can have that too. And I still struggle with this. I'm still working. I'm a work in progress. But I'm so much better than I was when I started. You can have it too. The first step, and the only step we're going to talk about today, is to bring consciousness, bring an awareness to how you are living your life. Do you tell the truth? When people ask you to do things that you don't really want to do, do you just say yes to please them? Or do you stand up and say no? When you're in relationship with your romantic partner and he or she is doing something that damages you spiritually, doesn't sit well with you spiritually, do you speak up or do you swallow, the, do you swallow those feelings? You have the right to be who you are. You have a message that you were sent here to deliver. You have a contribution that you were sent here to make. You can't do that if you hold your spirit hostage to the lies that keep you stuck that keep you, maybe keep you safe and maybe keep you with people who may or may not be the best for you. Tell the truth for the next 48 hours. How about that? This is my challenge to you. I am encouraging you for the next 48 hours. You don't have to write about it. You don't have to journal about it. You can always email me to talk about it if you want to. But just for the next 48 hours, shine a light of consciousness into how you are rolling in this world, how you're showing up. Are you telling the truth or are you living a lie? You don't have to do anything about it. But my experience has been that the more I shine some light of consciousness onto certain aspects of my behavior that I think need some correcting, the more easy it is for me to course correct. So that's my challenge to you for the next 48 hours. Are you telling the truth or are you living a lie? If you want to email me or text message me to let me know um, what you have found from your little experiment, I'm really happy to hear that. If you want to journal about it, you, you, can, you, know, you can do that too. The, the, the point is to bring some awareness to your life and where are you allowing yourself to suffer from spiritual laryngitis. It's time to clear your throat. It's time to let your truth be told. If I can support you in that journey in any way, please feel free to contact me. Um, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. You can also find me on LinkedIn. I have a few speaking engagements coming up. I'm doing a wellness workshop in Boston on the 8th. And I will be at the Shape Up with Shaumba Walk to Stomp Out Childhood Obesity on the 23rd, also in Boston. So to learn more about my upcoming speaking engagements and how you can get in touch with me, please visit me at my website, moadidavengaunlimited.com. In the meantime, I will leave you now. I hope that you have a great day, and I encourage you to bring the best of who you are to every situation, to every experience, to every relationship that you find yourself in. You deserve the best that life has to offer, and that is my wish for you. Until next time, take care and have a fabulous day.